Um, welcome uh, to the College Credit Plus meeting. My name is Beth Rosencrantz. Um, I'm a counselor here at the high school, and I am currently um, in charge of the class of 2018. However, if you have any questions about College Credit Plus or your child's schedule or anything like that, um, I can answer those for you. Uh, Another counselor coming in, we have um, Lindsay Mullenkamp, and she has the class of 2019. We have Georgia Huntsman, and she is the class of 2017. The, if you have an incoming freshman, um, their counselor is not here right now because she's on maternity leave, but if you have any questions, we can answer those for you. Um, the point of the College Credit Plus is uh, for your child to be able to take college classes while they are in high school. So um, before we get started though, if you can pull this uh, presentation, it is in your folder. And you guys can go ahead and take notes and follow along as I go. So the College Credit Plus program, um, like I said, is an opportunity for your child to take the college level classes. Um, these classes, if they're taking them at a public university, they are free. Now um, with that, they can take these um, with all kinds of different universities throughout the state. A lot of people always think Edison because you know they're right next door, but we do have some students taking classes at Columbus State, um, University of Toledo. Just typically those um, classes they take at those locations are online. Um, the point of College uh, Credit Plus is for your child uh, to take you know, a rigorous curriculum. Um, th they're obviously gonna be ready for this and to push them and to prepare them and get them a little ahead uh, for when they do uh, move on to the college level. As far as um, getting accepted, each college is a little bit different as far as their admission requirements. Um, in your packet, and you don't need to look at this right now, but we do uh, lay out the admission requirements for Wright State University as well as Edison because those are the two institutions that we partner with and we offer um, their programs on our campus. If you want additional information about the universities and what they, so say your child wants to go to Wright State, or I'm sorry, uh, Bowling Green and look at College Credit Plus, you would go onto that uh, college's website and they lay out um, the requirements to get admitted. So the first step is for your child to get admitted. They do that by completing an application and then they're going to submit their test scores. Um, usually the students take their ACT and each university has it laid out as far as what qualifying score they need um, to, get that, to get into that university. And Amber, the Edison representative, will go over a little bit more detail about what you have to do to get into Edison. Um, as far as the ACT, I have given you paperwork in your folder. To take the ACT, you sign up online. You can see um, the next test date coming up is April 9th, and there is a March 4th deadline. That is what you're going to want to sign up to take if you're planning on um, if you need the ACT for your College Credit Plus coursework. Uh, that way the scores can get in in time for us um, to apply and to get registered for classes. On that sheet, you can also notice there are two different ACTs. There's a regular ACT and there is an ACT plus writing. Depending upon the level of your child is, um, de determines what test I would recommend. If you are a junior and senior, we would recommend taking the ACT plus writing because um, for some universities, you're gonna need that writing score for admission purposes. So getting that writing out of the way, um, as you get a little bit closer to college, you, know, you have that and you don't have to worry about it. If you are a soft freshman or sophomore, you can choose which one you wanna take because you're gonna take the ACT again at a later date and you can pick up the writing later. Um, the test is offered on Saturday, mor and on Saturday mornings. They are offered at Piqua High School um, as well as other locations, you know, Troy and Sydney and surrounding schools. Um, but again, you, their website is at the bottom that you'll go to register and set up an account um, to get that started. 
If you are a junior or a senior and your child qualifies for free and reduced lunch, you do receive two ACT fee waivers um, during your high school career. You just need to see your counselor to um, obtain those. In addition, if your child is on an IEP, they can get accommodations when they take the ACT. They could get extended time or they could get read aloud. Your child just needs to come see their counselor because there is special paperwork that needs to be completed. Students can earn up to 30 credit hours um, per academic year through the College Credit Plus program, and then throughout the whole program, they can earn up to 120 hours. What we do is we sit down with the child and we determine how many classes they're going to take here at the high school, how many they're going to take um, at the post-secondary level, and then we, it's a puzzle. You know, we have to drop a class here, add a class here, and, and we figure it all out but just realize it has to remain under those 30 hours. This is new um, for this year. In fact, um, some of the rules aren't even expected out quite yet, but starting with this school year, um, you are able to now use the College Credit Plus program to take classes in the summer. So. Um, Again, um, it's new, and <laughs> we'll, we'll kind of move forward as we, as we learn more about the program. I do know um, you'll need to let your counselor know because this will expedite when you have to have things in and you know, making sure we get you registered for those classes. With the summer session, um, as I said in a few, a few minutes ago that you have those 30 hours those 30 hours will run with this new summer session from you know the end of May this year starts a new year until May of you know the following year. So you need to you need to kind of plan. Um, maybe you're not going to do any college classes during your say junior year, and you wanted to do all a whole bunch during your summer. You could do that, but if you want to um, have enough credit hours for your summer and throughout the rest of the year, just make sure you're sitting down with your counselor and letting them know your plan because you don't want to run out of hours, if that makes sense. Um, also realize that some schools may run multiple summer sessions. So I know at Edison they have a summer session and then they have a late summer session um, with different time frames. So I don't know if you want to look at that maybe if you're planning a vacation or something like that. There are some opportunities for a little bit of flexibility. Again, um, just to reiterate, uh, make sure you let your, know, your counselor know as soon as possible if you're going to do the summer because um, we have to get the applications in that much quicker and uh, make sure we have enough time to schedule for classes. The, the big question is, um, should my kid do College Credit Plus? Should they do AP? This comes up and this is a, a, con a question that I'm constantly answering. And so I just want to look at both programs and, and kind of let you know, uh, it might, might help you decide for your family. If your child is one that wants to go to an Ivy League school, or if they're going out of state, you're going to want to choose the AP route. However, if you want to stay, and, and that's because of transferability of credits, okay, and, and how to get into the Ivy League schools um, with the AP. As far as in-state, um, the public universities, uh, they have an agreement, and I'll get into more detail, but if you're going to stay in-state then you know, and go to a public university, we'd say yes, College Credit Plus would be fine. There is one exception I'm just going to be really straight about, forward about. Um, Ohio State, they have traditionally liked more of the AP. And when I questioned them about this last year with this big push for College Credit Plus, um, their admissions rep said AP. <laughs> so um, just so you know, if that is what your plan is, um, you're going to want to make sure you have your AP core classes on there. The other thing that you're going to want to consider when you determine whether or not you're going to move forward with a College Credit Plus 
is, is your child ready? You know, these professors do not know the difference between a high school student and um, a college student. They're going to all be treated the same way. They're going to have all the same responsibilities. They're going to give them a syllabus at the end or at the beginning of the class, and they're going to be responsible for those assignments. Um, they may say, hey, turn this paper in in a week. If they turn it in, great. If they don't, it is what it is. And the professor's not going to call you and tell you that they did not turn that paper in. Okay? It's, they're treated like a college kid. So if your child is not doing their homework now when they're in high school, um, it's, they might not be ready yet for the college level. The other thing that you need to think about is um, the maturity of your child. These professors do not change the topics or the content of their presentations based on the age of students. They're going to be sitting right next to 20, 30 year olds. And some of the topics of conversation may be a little uh, questionable, you know, as far as the appropriateness for some students, especially since this extends down to seventh graders now. But realize um, your child needs to be mature and he, they need to be responsible before you move forward in this because every year we have students that, that fail classes. And uh, we'll talk about in a minute why you don't want that to be your child. So go ahead and change. So um, what happens once your child applies um, and gets accepted is we sit down and like I said, we pick out the schedule and what classes they want to take. And your child can choose any um, type of, I'm off a slide, that's okay. Any type of course um, that's non-remedial, um, but it, it also needs, uh, it cannot be religious in nature either. Both universities um, that we work with, both Edison and Wright State, are accredited. Um, that question has come up in the past about transferring of credits. Um, many times when we are working with students about what classes they should take, we look at um, what it's called the transfer module um, and uh, transfer assurance guide. And, and what the public universities have done is they've sat down and they've identified these classes that if you go to any public university, they're going to accept those credits. So a lot of times when we're working with your child, we, we work within that, those parameters. If we're, we work outside of those parameters, um, what we do is we go to a website called Transferology and we see how the course may, um, may transfer um, to those universities and see those different pathways. I've given you those um, websites that we utilize, um, so that way you can take a look at them as well. Um, but for example, say um, a student comes to me and they said, you know, I'm going to go to UC and I'm going to study accounting. So a lot of times we will sit down and we'll pull up, I'll go to UC's website and I'll pull up accounting and we'll see exactly what, you know, they need to do. Maybe they need a humanities credit. Okay, that's easy to pick up. We'll sign up for humanities at Edison. Maybe they're going to need some social sciences. We'll pick up psychology. Um, we'll get some of those general education courses out of the way um, that the students will need. Sometimes with the, the major classes, it gets a little kind of shaky because some universities really want you to take those major classes at their university since that, that's where you're getting your degree. Um, but that's kind of how we do the process. We try to find follow that transfer module and we're looking long term to figure out what would be the best pathway for your child. With College Credit Plus, um, this was new for this year, um, three credit hour class is equal to one high school credit. So um, the way this works, um, a question that comes up is how does it work with like eligibility and if they take college credit classes, do they count as eligibility? With this change, each college credit class is kind of worth two eligibility points now. So if you take three college level classes, you're getting, you know, six credits of eligibility. So we, we will work with your child if they're an athlete. Just let us know that they're an athlete so we can watch their credits and watch what they're taking to make sure they're eligible. With that um, increase in credits with eligibility though, if you're only taking three credits, 
or three classes, three credits each, if they fail one, they're gonna be ineligible. So we would prefer to pad their schedule a little bit. Um, and that would be the recommendation. So again, we will work with your child with eligibility. Um, what I have noticed as I'm doing credit checks on my sophomores that are taking college level classes is you're getting your credits pretty quickly. <laughs> you know, a semester of ONU US history now gives you one full credit in social studies. So that has been uh, a big change that I've noticed. Go ahead and pass, go past that one. That's just the title of this next slide. Thank you. Um, different reasons that students may take advantage of this uh, opportunity is some students, um, when you take College Credit Plus, it counts as your high school as well as college credit. So some students take it to fulfill their graduation requirements. For example, you need to have government to graduate. So um, students can go over to Edison or wherever and um, take a political science course that we say is the equivalent and then they can earn that credit towards graduation. Others, um, every year I have kids come down and say, hey, I wanna graduate early. And I'm like, you know, they're like, I'll have all my credits by my, the end of my junior year. And I'm like, okay, well that's fine, but have you ever thought of going into the College Credit Plus program? Because if you graduate early after your junior year, your parents pay for college. If you stay, the school slash taxpayers, which is kind of your parents, <laughs> pay for the pay for the the, the classes. So um, we have those conversations a lot of times with students that you know really make sure because you're going to save thousands of dollars by taking advantage of this program. Other students, you know, I had a student a few years ago that said they wanted to go into criminal justice, and you know we don't offer any of those classes on our campus, so they went and um, went over to Edison and took the criminal justice class kind of as an exploration to see if they really wanted to go into that field of study. Um, and I explained that, hey, transferability, I'm not sure how that'll all work out, but for her, it was more about determining you know, a major versus whether or not the class would transfer. So those are you know, different reasons why and how students use the College Credit Plus program. Another benefit, um, as I've already mentioned, is it's free. You don't have to pay for books. You don't have to pay um, fees if you go to public universities. Private universities, there may be some cost associated. Um, you'll have to just uh, investigate that if you decide to go with a private university. Uh, at Piqua High School for next year, um, there is going to be a change in the way we do books. Traditionally, um, you would purchase, or you would go to the library of that university and you would get the books. Um, with, with the change, what is going to happen now is that you're going to get the college textbooks from our library at the high school. There is a letter in your um, mailbox, or mailbox, um, your <laughs> folder explaining this in a little bit more detail, but the, the bottom line is you're going to come down to see Mrs. Bowman, the librarian, with your, with your ISBN number of the book that you need for that class. And you'll say, hey, this is what I need, and she will provide you with that book. If she does not have that, we will then order the book and get it to you. At the end of the course, um, you will bring the book back to the library just like you do your normal textbooks, but you'll just have to bring them back in a timely manner after the semester is over. If you fail to bring back your textbook, um, you'll, you'll have to pay the cost associated with that. For all of us that have gone to college, we know that those book fees are a little exorbitant. I would not recommend losing a book or not returning it, okay? So again, um, it goes into more detail in there, in your folder. If you are attending a university and you're gonna have to go to their campus, you will have to pay for your parking pass. The one um, I mentioned, make sure your child's ready, and this is the reason why. If your child fails a course, or if they drop after, you know, I think it says the 14th calendar day, um, that cost of that, that course uh, can be the family's responsibility. So um, that's why we also want to stress, make sure your child's ready so that you're not having to pay for these classes because your child um, wasn't being responsible. Also, that F will be on your, your high school transcript it'll be on your college transcript. 
It will be calculated into your GPA. It will be counted for eligibility purposes. And um, we will hold your transcripts until those fees are, are paid. Um, one thing also that you need to think about are those college transcripts, they follow you. So when you um, go to college, you're going to have your transcript sent to that university. And um, I'm, you, you're, you're not going to want some bad decisions made you know, in your younger years to, to be reflected at that time. So um, make sure your child's responsible and ready for this, I guess, is what I, I want to keep preaching. With um, the change in College Credit Plus um, last year, and it has taken effect this year, um, if we offer a course, say we're offering the AP English 11, we weight AP English 11 for valedictorians and salutatorians. We will then also weight the equivalent course um, at the university level at Edison. It's, um, if you look at their AP chart, it's the Comp 121 is what they give credit for. So um, if your child plans to be valedictorian or salutatorian and they're going to take classes um, at the university, they're going to want to sit down and talk with their counselor to make sure how that will all play out, to make sure that they're not messing themselves up and, you know, um, they're taking the classes in the right areas. With, with that, that valedictorian and salutatorian, that impacts the class of 2017 and 2018. So the, um, sophomores and juniors this year. With the incoming freshmen in all classes after that, the way we calculate valedictorian and salutatorian has changed and it is calculated on an honors diploma, ACT score, and GPA. So there will be no more weighting of grades um, for those lower grades. So those will be the criteria that are used to determine. Now, um, what you'll have to do after this meeting is you're going to make a determination as to whether or not you're going to move forward with the College Credit Plus program. Um, there is an intent form in your uh, folder. So if you're like, yes, this is exactly what my child's going to do, you're going to fill out this intent form and you're going to get it to the counselor um, by April 1st. If, they are, if your child's currently at the junior high, you can turn it into the junior high counselor and Mrs. McGarren will send it over to us. You can also turn those in at the end of the um, program. Um, also in your folder, and I would like everybody to pull this out at this time, is an attendance form. It is, a, it is mandatory that your child and a parent receive the College Credit Plus counseling um, once during you know, their, their high school experience. So the good news for you is that you never have to listen to this again, yay. Uh, but what I need is proof that you are here. So go ahead and um, sign it, put the child's date of graduation, and then if your child is here with you, have them sign and mark it off as well. If your child is not here, they can attend the March 2nd meeting, which is at 8 a.m. during the school day. We'll call them down and go over all this stuff, and they can sign off on their paperwork then. At the end of the program, um, we'll collect these as you leave, um, or we'll just make a pile out there outside on the, um, yeah. <laughs> desk. <laughs> Big word. <laughs> any, quest um, any questions about the... Amber is going to be presenting here um, in a minute about Edison specifically. Are there any general questions about the College Credit Plus program? Yeah. Does it matter if they take the class there or at Edison and run um, Yes. It's, yes. If they're taking a class, she asked if the cost mattered based on the location. Um, if a co and I, I believe it's 40, 80, 120. Or I don't, okay, last year it was 40, 80, 120. So for example, if they took a class on our campus taught by our teacher, it would cost us $40 a credit hour. 
if, if Edison's professor came over, it would be $80 a credit hour. If they went over there, it would be $120 a credit hour. So if your child failed a class on our campus, it would you know, be a lot cheaper than if they failed it over there on their campus. The, the parents do not pay as long as they pass. Other questions? Okay, Amber, you're up. Good evening. Um, my name is Amber Selhorst. I am one of the coordinators of College Credit Plus at Edison State. Um, to save you all from death by PowerPoint, Ms. Rosencrantz covered most of what I was going to say. So I'll just hit on some stuff from Edison and I won't make you sit through my whole 19 slide presentation because y'all don't want to be here for that. <laughs> um, so just some key things for Edison. Um, summer is a big thing. Um, so remember, yes, you can get a head start. And I will say that that is a great thing. Remember too, our summer semester is eight weeks long. It's not a full 16 weeks like our normal fall and spring semesters are. So please know that when you come in. We'll tell your student that. Um, you know, there are classes that your student does not want to sit through for 16 weeks. Nobody wants to sit and do Microsoft Office for 16 weeks. I didn't, your student doesn't. So that's something I would say, take in the summer. Don't take English, don't take communications. Don't take those core gen ed classes. You want them to have that 16 weeks. Um, one of the great things that we're doing with Pickle right now, um, we are offering a lot of our sciences, like AMP 1 and 2, 2 are being offered here. So look at those things. Talk to your guidance counselor about what are the courses that Edison's now offering at your high school. A, you know, mom hit on a great point. Student doesn't do too well and they have to pay. You don't want to pay the, I think it's going to be like 164 um, for coming to Edison for it. Um, you want to pay the $44 for being at Piqua for it. So watch those things um, and we'll help you. Um, you know, we're pretty good partners on things and, and telling you what, what really works. Um, the April deadline is a big one um, and getting in for testing. In your packet um, is our uh, application and our guidelines that has um, our testing dates and stuff. We do Saturday testing, kind of like the ACT, so we'll take an ACT score, um, and that information's on there, but it's an ACT of um, 18 on the English, the reading and writing, um, and a 22 on the math. So, or um, you can take our placement test, which we call the COMPASS test, um, and then test college level that way as well. So, and we will tell you as soon as you test, um, at one of our test scenes, whether you are accepted or not, and, and for what. So it's not just one thing um, or another. You can get the English, or you can get um, the math, you can get it all, um, things like that. So we do kind of work, work with you on that one. So on scheduling, um, that's also a big thing. You know, you want to get with your guidance counselor before this, the year ends. So. You know, when they leave at the end of graduation, you know, you want to make sure that your schedule for the next year is, is set at Edison um, or in here at the high school. Um, getting schedules done early gives you the priority of time. Uh, what time do you want class? Pick what starts at 7.30. We have classes that start at 7.30. You will not see me at 7.30 in the morning at Edison. <laughs> but you guys may want to. You may want to come in and get your English done or something like that. You know, you have practice at 3.00. Um, we have classes after that, but you know, you want to make sure that you get the class times that work for you. So those are some things in there too. Um, orientation, those dates are also in there. That is mandatory for all of our students. Um, you actually, as new students, will register at orientation. Somebody wants in. Um, so we do, you'll register, you'll get your student ID, 
Edison actually does free parking. It's part of the, one of the fees that we do not charge our um, College Credit Plus students. Um, you do have to get your parking pass within the first two weeks because um, they will ticket your cars. So, and I think it's a $20 ticket. The high school will not pay for that one for you. Sorry. <laughs> um, so we, we do try to keep things simple. Um, Mrs. Rosencrantz really talked about accelerated and you know, making sure your student is ready. Something else students will tell you that you are, have available to you is online classes. I caution you on online classes, at least for your first year. Online classes, and I am an online master's student right now, they are hard. There's a lot more extra time that your student is gonna have to put in with them. They're not getting the lecture face-to-face -face in the classroom like you do here at the high school or in our classroom. So make sure they understand how college works, how you know, their assignments and stuff works before you say, go, please do an online class. I'm like, there are some courses that you can get away with it. The Microsoft Office one is probably one of them. Um, nobody wants to sit in class for that. So, but think of those things and ask us. You know, we, have, we have no problem coming and asking or answering your questions and things like that. Um, by all means, that's what we're here for. On the online thing, you do also have to te or, um, take our online workshop. It's a week-long online workshop. It is free for our um, College Credit Plus students and applicants. Um, so it's usually $30, um, but it's, it gets them used to, to seeing those things. So if at some point you think that's a way you want to go, that would also help you decide if you wanted to go that route or not. Um, Mrs. Rosenkrantz talked about um, career credits. Um, I have a student, actually a soon to be a Pickle High School student that is going to hopefully be into our nursing program come this fall. Um, if you're not planning on coming to Edison after high school, talk to us about just doing your gen eds or an associate of arts or associate of science. Um, like she said, the criminal justice class, it may because it's an intro but I won't ever guarantee it. Those gen eds, your Englishes, your psychologies, your sociologies, communications, things like that, those things are gonna transfer. And they're gonna transfer to any state school. So make sure you know you really know what you wanna do. This is kind of your time to, to figure out too, you know, what interests you as well. You know, if you're gonna graduate early, then by all means, try to take something. Um, but what work, work with me, um, I'm here a lot anyways, um, or you know, Mr. Rosencrantz will send you over. We'll talk about those things. Um, I had another student in that was looking at UC. Um, so we're looking, transferology is a, a great tool for us as well. We're looking to make sure what you're taking at Edison will transfer. Um, we want you guys to get the most bang out of the school's bucks as you can, um, but not at the cost of your student doing work that they don't need. Um, so, I think that's it. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. So, only, um, a few more things that I just wanted to point out um, before we end this session is that in your folder there is thank you <laughs> um, information on Wright State. We used to partner um, with Ohio Northern University. The, for the next year, we're going to be working with Wright State, and they're going to be offering the pre-calculus class um, on our campus. So if you want to look at Wright State, um, on the back, it explains what the ACT scores that they're looking for for that uh, pre-calculus class. Um, it'll fall under the math. They're looking for the 22 um, ACT, and then they're looking for an 18 on the English. So um, the Wright State rep could not be here today to explain that. Also with um, Wright State, it explains all the steps that you need to do in order to apply, and they have an online application. When you do go to apply to either Edison or Wright State, you will have to send your final transcript or an official transcript. Um, we've provided you with um, that request. Those transcripts do cost a dollar, um, and you'll bring them to the high school office, and we'll send those out to you. Finally, if you have more than one child um, that
that's you know currently eligible for the college credit plus. I have some extra attendance sheets. So if you have another child, uh, grade seven through 12, just raise your hand um, so both of your kids can be represented. Okay. Again, if that child's not here with you, um, they'll have to attend the meeting, but at least you don't have to attend it again. <laughs> so, any other questions before we end the program? Okay, well, if you are an incoming freshman um, to the high school, we are offering a scheduling meeting um, to talk about the different courses and to talk about graduation requirements and all that kind of um, fun stuff in counselor world, I guess. Um, and that meeting will start at seven o'clock. And the rest of you, have a great day. <laughs>